These are the holy men whom the Lord chose in his own perfect love. To them he gave eternal glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the blessed apostles have brought us to acknowledge your name, graciously grant, through the intercession of Saints Simon and Jude, that the church may constantly grow by increase of the peoples who believe in you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred to the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Amen. Their message goes out through all the earth. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out into the world today, and night to night imparts knowledge. The the not a word nor a discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. Alleluia, Alleluia, 
Alleluia. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. The glorious company of apostles praise you. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went up to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. When day came, he called his disciples to himself. And from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called a zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> so this coming Thursday on Halloween, we have all of our students dressed up as, uh, as their favorite saint or just as a saint because it's part of their saint project. So I and God willing, some of the priests and the administration will be judging the, the saint costume. And I always say, because I have a plethora of saint projects to judge, so I always say, just tell me one thing about your saints. One thing. So I'm going to apply that same approach to, to this homily. When, I say, when it comes to, I'm going to say one thing about St. Simon and then St. Jude. St. Simon, the zealot, would have been, as tradition holds, the, he would have been the groom at the wedding feast at Cana. Simply tradition, we, we don't have that in any text, scriptural text. He's from Cana, and tradition has it that upon seeing our Lord change water into wine, he was so impressed by that, he eventually became a follower of Jesus. So presumably, he and his wife would have lived as brother and sister in a sense, and he would have left his wife to follow our Lord. Okay, so I don't know what the bride thinks about that at that wedding, but that's what tradition holds. And in St. Jude, Jude Thaddeus, as I'm always inclined to say, because I, we want to make the distinction between Jude Thaddeus and Judas Iscariot. And again, you all know he's invoked as the patron saint of impossible causes. So I'm thinking like Yankees fan out there are probably invoking St. Jude, for example. I'm just being facetious. I, evidently, there's no baseball fan here, but look, nothing is over unless the last out is recorded, just for the record. Now, going back to Jude Thaddeus, he, as I would like to think, would have been the opposite of Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, despair of God's mercy. Nothing worse than to despair of God's unconditional love. Because had he repented and been contrite and wept tears of sorrow, like St. Peter, he would have been forgiven. Whereas he despair, therefore, Jude Thaddeus would be the opposite. Because his name is often listed last. It's been said that he isn't invoked as much and so St. Bridget received a, a vision from our Lord telling her to invoke the name of St. Jude because for in, in difficult cases. So all of you can invoke the name of St. Jude for that 
child who is wayward, who strayed from the faith, or for a family member, or somebody you know that was once born Catholic and has now gone astray, that they, way, they can become like the prodigal son and, and return to the, the sheepfold. The next thing I want to talk about would be the fact that our Lord did what I like to, to coin, he did an all-nighter. Okay, our Lord did an all-nighter. I, 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 looking at other texts, I'm trying to think, I don't know how many instances where it said he stayed up all night. Presumably, that would have been his intention on Holy Thursday evening at the, in the Garden of Gethsemane. But he had a surprise visit, so his prayer was in, interrupted by Judas Iscariot and, and all the bad Roman soldiers. But in this case, it said he stayed up all night to pray. Whereas you and I, you know, presumably would have done all-nighters when we were in college. I remember being undisciplined as a college freshman or even a sophomore. You stay up and you study and you study with your friends and you end up wasting time anyway. So I learned that lesson. But there's nothing worse than being up all night drinking coffee and seeing, like, the sun rises and knowing that you're not going to get any sleep. Whereas... We may have done that because we were undisciplined college students, whereas here our Lord had one motive for pulling an all-nighter. It would have been because he loved much. He loves immensely. Therefore, one can speculate that our Lord spent the night not only thinking about all the apostles, but clearly, I always think when he's in prayer, in, in conversation with his heavenly father from the wood of the cross for example he would have had knowledge of the sin of every man woman and child from the very dawn of creation starting with Adam and eve until the end at his second coming in order to atone for our sins he would have had to have intimate knowledge of those things whereas that's high christology Low Christology, as sometimes we were taught by, by bad theologians in the seminary, it would have been, they, they would not uphold that. They would have said, oh, that's just not possible. No human being can have that kind of knowledge. Whereas, obviously, our Lord is divine. Hence, he would have had intimate knowledge of everything we've done in order to atone for our sins, to die on the cross for us. So I'll end, and you've heard it quoted from Friday's Homeless, in a very charming way. You know, those are the homilies we, we, you remember because we, we misquote something. So on Friday, Father mentioned that, oh, he misquoted that phrase where shame me once, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Okay. And he said, like, like, I think punch me once or something like that, shame on you, punch me twice, shame on me. Whereas to take that, our Lord would not have had that mentality because he loved much. He would allow himself to be fooled, to be ill-treated, to be betrayed, to be crucified. So he would not have been on the cross looking down at the bad Sadducees and Pharisees and Sadducees and then the Roman soldiers. And he would not have said, look, you crucify me once, like shame on you. Crucify me twice, shame on me. He would not have said that. He would have allowed himself to, to be crucified again and again and again out of love for us. Now, you and I are not called to be doormats. That's just cowardice and being weak. We're called to be strong, to have the virtue of fortitude, which would then allow us to withstand the cross of this life, difficult moments, for example, someone difficult in our lives. But to stand strong, be joyful, and not be critical and judgmental, and that is the best way for us to die to ourselves in imitation of Saints Simon and Jude. So may we be assiduous in prayer, not needing to pull an all-nighter, but should we be lacking in, in sleep, just call to mind that you can offer that, that up for the conversion of the poor sinners. With hearts full of gratitude, we now turn to the Lord in prayer. For our Holy Father, may the Holy Spirit continue to instill his leadership with wisdom and fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for government officials. May God grant them eyes to see and hearts to respond to those who suffer in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community, especially those who are sick or hurting in any way, we pray continually for Susie Partida and Nicholas Monteroso. May Christ come to them in their moments of trials and suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who've died in Christ, may our triune God welcome them into their perfect eternal relationship of love with him. We pray especially for the repose of the soul of Luis Arciniaga, Arciniaga, the repose of his soul, and that of Stephen Hillis. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, we ask that you look upon these needs we have brought before you today through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we venerate the perpetual glory of the holy apostles, Simon and Jude, O Lord, we ask that you receive our prayers and lead us to worthy celebration of the sacred mysteries through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. You should enter under my roof.
Let us pray. Having received this sacrament, O Lord, we humbly implore you in the Holy Spirit that what we do to honor the glorious passion of the apostles Simon and Jude may keep us ever in your love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. Reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Amen.